Well, I have to tell you, my next guest is a big disappointment to me. He told me he's not going to get me Packer tickets. <laughs> no. We'll see what we can do. See what we, oh, yeah. There's hope. I'll ask there's, a friend. Um, very much just kidding. I'm Jerry DeShane. This is The Local Perspective, a production of the League of Wisconsin Municipalities with the help of Wisconsin Community Media. And my guest is the mayor of Green Bay, Mayor Eric Genrick. Yes, thanks for visiting. Thanks for having me on. Well, thank you for having us here. So set the Packer tickets aside. Um, New mayor, former state legislator. You have a master's degree in library science. I do. How'd you end up here? Yeah, so it's a a long and winding road, I guess. But um, I got an interest in politics sort of very early on. Um, Not as early as some, but certainly when I was going to college, developed an interest in politics and so got involved at the legislature, Um, worked in the legislature for Senator Hansen for a number of years, worked for a congressman as well. Um, But the second career was supposed to be librarianship. So I got the master's degree, worked as an IT librarian for Brown County, um, but, you know, was bitten by the bug of politics and couldn't quite kick it. So decided to uh, to run for the legislature in 2012 was fortunate enough to, to win that that seat and served six years in the state assembly. And um, had a, a reputation, Republicans, Democrats, as a guy that people like to work with, is, is my impression. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely um, you know, try to be intentional about that working across the aisle on, uh, on solutions for people back here in Green Bay. And having that mindset, you know, that's really what attracted me to the office of mayor. Um, you know, you're, you, you're an executive, a local executive, you have a council, uh, it's just a smaller coalition of folks that you need to get on board in order to affect some positive change. And being in the minority in the legislature, you know, it's just a little bit of a different dynamic. One of 99 in the assembly, plus the 33 in the Senate, plus the governor. Um, so that's what was really attractive, um, you know, just being able to more rapidly enact policies uh, to benefit people here in Green Bay. And um, it's been fun so far. Good, good. and and. There's about seven different avenues that I want to take from that opening yeah. statement of yours. But you're the mayor of Wisconsin's third largest city, arguably its most nationally or even internationally recognized yep. city. I mean, that that's quite a different stage. Right. Um, but you grew up in Green Bay. I mean, do you, does it feel different walking into the mayor's office? Yeah, I was born and raised in Green Bay. Um, spent some time in Madison, but otherwise, uh, otherwise, you know, Green Bay guy through and through. Um, it's it's definitely a different role, you know, very institutionally distinct from the legislature. Um, but I, you know, I knew the previous mayor well. Served on the Economic Development Authority here, so you know, knew a number of the staff and, and department heads pretty well. Um, but you're never quite prepared for it. You know, there's there's definitely a learning curve involved and. Um, but city staff here have been super supportive. Um, city residents have been very supportive as well, working well with council, um, certainly at this stage and, and looking to continue to deepen that relationship. Um, the chief of staff for the former mayor, um, I kept on, Celestine Jeffries does a fantastic job yes, for the does. city. Um, former school board member, former member of our city council here. So it was incredibly helpful to have somebody um, with the institutional knowledge, especially during that transitional period early on in the tenure. Um, so that's that's made a huge difference. What, um, and a number of our audience members are mayors or council members wanting to run for mayor. What was the one thing that was not what you expected coming into the mayor's office? I, you know, there haven't been any big surprises, but there's a little surprise almost every single day, I would say. Okay. <laughs> I mean, just, just think, especially, you know. Are they girls, always good? Not always, no. <laughs> No, not always. Um, you know, it, it's by and large, it's been very positive. Um, but I think the tricky thing about being mayor is to just try to maintain that even keel all the way through because you get so much good news and then you're kind of thrown off occasionally by some bad, you know, development news or, um, you know, just different things here and there where you just, you know, you have to maintain, um, you know, keep your eye on the prize and just surf, surf the wave a little bit. Well, and when you say maintain an even keel, do you mean, you know, never let the people see you sweat sort of thing or keep an eye on the long term? What? Well, tell me more. What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, sort of never get too high, never get too low. Because um, you, you do, you know, you just you get some disappointing news occasionally and then you got to go out and cut a ribbon. Right. And you got to you got to be that cheerleader for the community in spite of 
what's going on within, within the walls of, of City Hall sometimes. Okay. Well, and I want to dig deeper into, into Green Bay. I mean, one of Wisconsin's oldest cities, as I said, internationally known. But I can't get off this librarian thing. <laughs> um, I'm a lobbyist. I've spent my whole career interacting with legislators and governors and congressmen. And not to say they have a big ego, but it's, <laughs> I don't, when I think of a librarian, I think of someone with kind of a service mentality, kind of quiet and introspective. And I just don't think of legislators that way. Right. <laughs> so, so tell me about the, yeah. am I just wrong? No, I mean, I think um, that's certainly the way that I identify. Um, that's the way that I think about politics is through a service lens. Um, my dad was trained as a social worker and my, my mom is a nurse. And uh, so for me, that, that was just kind of how I was raised. Um, service is really important. And, uh, and that's what's attractive about politics. I think um, you don't see a lot of politician librarians. So I've thought about it a fair amount, trying to figure out, you know, what the similarities are. Mm -hmm. And I would say both are, um, are attractive to generalists, you know, people who are interested yeah, sure. in many different topics. And so that's absolutely true of a legislator and a librarian, a, a policymaker of any kind really has to have an interest or at least feign an interest, <laughs> right? In a number of different topics. And it helps if you're genuinely you know, curious about the world, which I think is true of, um, you know, of good public servants and, and good librarians. I never thought about that. Now, now that you say that, I'm thinking of some of my favorite librarians. I, I did this once. I, I talked to one about a book that I'd read when I was 15 years old. No idea what the title was or anything like that. Yeah. Told her two or three things about it. and. <laughs> <laughs> but you really are. Do they train you to, or is it just a natural curiosity? Yeah, I think that's that tends to you know come with um, those who are attracted to to librarianship is just kind of an interest in, in a lot of things. Um, so that's certainly the, the similarity that I've I've identified anyway. But it's unique. You know, there's a, I think there's a county board supervisor, Paul Nelson, mm -hmm. uh, who's a librarian. Uh, I met a German woman who was a librarian and a politician. But uh, that's about it. That's my list at this point and myself. So if you're going to form small. a librarian caucus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be, looking, I'll be looking for a while. <laughs> well, and how does that generalist mindset and training help you in your role as mayor? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it gives me an excuse. The position of mayor gives me an excuse um, to be curious about the city um, and just in, a, in an incredible variety of ways. And that was true of being a legislator to some extent as well. Um, but there's, you know, it's a, it's a moderately sized city, like you said, third largest um, in the state, but there's still so much to discover every single day. So many people that I'm still unfamiliar with. Um, so it's it's great um, if you are, you know, it's helpful if, if you're kind of built that way to have an interest in, in a lot of things and a lot of people. I'm trying to, um, we, we do the local perspective program once a month and I'm trying to make sure I ask every guest, what's your local perspective? And, and I guess for you, I, I put it in this context is what's What's your perspective? What's your sort of vision mm -hmm. when it comes to being mayor? How do you, where are you going? What do you see? Right. I mean, I think the one of the most important um, aspects of that, um, the disposition that I have is optimistic. I mean, I'm, re I'm really excited about where things stand for the mm -hmm. city of Green Bay. I think that's true of a vast majority of people who live here. Um, you know, we believe that our, our future is bright. Uh, our downtown has, you know, uh, come so far in the last it's uh, 15, 20, 25 years and continues to, to grow and get stronger every single day. Um, our community is diversifying uh, to a huge extent. Again, in the last 20, 25 years, we've seen, in particular, our Latino population has grown tremendously. Um, and so, you know, I'm really proud of what this community has always been, you know, where we've come from, but I'm even more optimistic about our future. And, you know, I, I wouldn't have run for this office if I didn't feel that way. Um, that might be a criticism, you know, an unintentional self-criticism. I think you need, you know, leadership um, when things are going sideways as well. But, mm -hmm. um, but I'm really excited about where this community is headed. And the, the nice thing about 
a city of this size is that um, you feel as though no matter where you're situated, I hope people feel as well as though they can they can get involved. You know, they can really make a change. They can serve on a board or a commission or the neighborhood association board of directors and have kind of a, a direct line, you know, with council, a direct line with the mayor's office. Um, that's certainly the message that I've been trying to send. We have an open office here. Um, so just about every Thursday from 3.30 to 4.30, we open up the doors and people can just, you know, come in and let me know what they're thinking. Um, we're, we, you get a lot of traffic. It depends, that. right? It, it depends on, on the week and depends what we're debating um, at, at council. Uh, but I just thought it was important to, you know, to give that opportunity to sure. folks. Um, so if something does occur to them, they're able to stop in. And um, the reason that, uh, that that idea came to me, I was, I'm a big Lincoln fan, um, not unique in that way. Abraham Lincoln, you know, pretty popular president. <clears throat> but during the Civil War, like throughout his presidency, he, you know, hours a day, he had just citizens, average citizens coming in, you know, making their case, petitioning their government. And I'm like, you know, if Abraham Lincoln can do this during the Civil War, we could probably do an hour a week at City Hall. Well, and it's, you know, even though you, I've known you for a number of years, you're a very approachable, very humble guy, but I'm, do you find that a fair number of people in the city think, ooh, that's the mayor, that's the mayor's office? Right. Like that's sort of above and beyond, you know, untouchable? Right. No, I think that's definitely um, an impression that people have of government in general, of, of city hall. Uh, it can be very intimidating, uh, especially to come to, you know, a city council meeting or a community meeting or something like that. So, you know, we're also focused on, on pushing city business out into the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that started right before I got here um, is the pop-up city hall. Um, so we have a number of city staff that'll travel around to different community events um, to just, you know, be more accessible, more approachable, a little bit more casual, because uh, it, it can be intimidating, I think, for the average citizen to, to um, you know, step outside of their comfort zone and come down to City Hall. So do you, you say pop-up City Hall, that's a new idea I'd not heard of before. Do you participate in those ever? I have, okay. I have. Uh, would like to do many more into the future, but um, but yeah, we had the, um, the one that I participated in was at Aldo Leopold School. Um, they have the Aldo Legacy Day, which okay. was back in June, but um, a number of our city staff have been at farmer's markets and, and different events around town um, throughout the summer. Are those really primarily listening sessions or can they actually transact municipal business if people need them to? Right. So we haven't necessarily gotten to that stage where okay. you'd be able to, um, you know, buy a pass to, uh, to our, one of our pools or, uh, or pay a parking ticket or something like that. It's really more informational. So we, you know, carry a bunch of brochures, hand out business cards and, and try to just answer questions that people have. Um, some of the, the city. some of the other, some of your, your fellow mayors around the state, are looking at how they can get into using technology mm -hmm. to do that. I was talking to Mayor Verwink over in Wisconsin Rapids, right. and they have an app that people can use to report potholes mm -hmm. or direct inquiries into the city. Do you see that in your future? Yeah, we do have, a, it's called a request for service system that's available on our website Okay, um, that people can, you know, if they see a pothole, they can report it. Um, if they, you know, need a, a tree trimmed, um, they can report that, all, all those kinds of uh, of concerns and uh, and we're really trying to promote that uh, as a way for people um, to interact with the government. I think a lot of people are familiar with their alders. You know, that's kind of a traditional route, right. which is great. You know, if you have that personal connection, um, you know, that continues to be an avenue that people can pursue if, if they have an issue or a question. But uh, I think technology is, gonna, is going to continue to play a, a bigger and bigger role um, with these kinds of questions. Okay. So you're in your first year. What's kind of give me a quick rundown. What what are your immediate? What were the short term things you needed to do? Right. We've talked a little bit about that. Then kind of give me your two three year plan, and then what's out on the horizon? What's what's the big wowie yeah. that you're working on? Right. Yeah. So right out of the gates, you know, I talked a little bit about accessibility. That was really important to me to just try to open up city hall as much as possible and make it clear that people can approach me and get in touch and, and stop down and express what they have on their minds. Sort of related to that is just a, and you know, a lot of people obviously talk about the need for this in government these days, but just to focus on civility. Mm -hmm. um, so improving the relationship that the office of the mayor has with our council members, sure. uh, just making sure that, you know, I, um, 
I stay above the fray whenever possible and not engage in some of the, you know, the politics of, of personal destruction that we see, you know, just kind of rampant. In, Do you find your council, Washington. I'm sorry for interrupting. No. Do you find your council members appreciate that? Yeah, so far, you know, I, I'm not sure if I'm still in the honeymoon period or, you know, just on the outer edge of it, but um, we've had, we've had really good meetings thus far and, and it's a good group of people. Um, so it's just, uh, it's important for me to continue focusing on that. Um, other short term things that, um, and, and will be long term as well, but, um, you know, I mentioned diversity, the fact that it's a real yep. strength in the city of Green Bay. So, um, so Celestine Jeffries and I, my chief of staff who I mentioned earlier, have been very um, serious about increasing our uh, municipal equality index score, which is provided by the Human Rights Campaign. Um, so just to you know to make some concrete changes out of the gates, uh, but also change the perception of uh, of a city like Green Bay, um, sort of culturally conservative. That takes a long by, time. by reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, Appleton, I think, has has done a lot in this regard because it's been a huge priority for Mayor Hanna. Mm -hmm. um, so I have developed a, a really nice relationship with him. Out of the gates look to him as a, as a real uh, role model and mentor and, um, and really you know, trying to, to shift the perception of this community to be more in line um, with the Appletons of the world, a place that is really welcoming um, to people of all different perspectives and backgrounds. And that, on the one hand, everything we read, whether you're Green Bay or Crivets, communities have to become more welcoming, right? Mm -hmm. To succeed, right. to attract people into the future. But change is hard. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel community pushback or do you find the community is saying, yeah, let's do this? Yeah, I mean, you definitely get a little bit of, of pushback, but I think by and large, people recognize that, that we need to change. Um, and it, it, it can be difficult and challenging at times, but it's, you know, when I talk about diversity and inclusion, it's not about displacing anyone, mm -hmm. right? There's no one that should that should feel a real loss from this. It's about making space for people um, to feel as though they can they can plug in and be successful. It's not about pushing other people out. Right. And um, so it's easier said than done, obviously, but uh, but I would say so far so good. Okay. Yeah, that's my my family literally got off the boat here and settled here. And sure. You know, they, they made room for them back in the early 1900s. And in some ways, you know, skin color might be different. Mm -hmm. The accent and language is different. But is it really such a change from how Green Bay was founded? Right. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, the immigrant experience, um, you know, 100 years ago was, was distinct from the one that occurs today. But there are a ton of similarities. And, uh, you know, we need to look to history as a guide, both for, for good and bad. Um, but I think we can learn a lot. Okay. Well, let's, um, what are the big dreams? I mean, okay, civility is, is great. That's a life work. Um, becoming a welcoming community, another life work. What are some other, what are, what are some of the other kind of wow EG that's gonna be right. really cool things you're working on? Yeah, so I mean, I, I mentioned downtown earlier, um, which has seen a tremendous resurgence over the last 20 odd years or so was a huge priority for our former mayor, Mayor Schmidt, and um, you know really want to continue with that. So we have a number of, of development projects that are ongoing here, both on the east side and, and west sides of, of our downtown, um, and want to make sure that, um, that we continue uh, along those lines. Uh, coal piles have been a fixture of Green Bay skyline. Yep. <laughs> for, right on the river. For, for quite some time, <laughs> right on the river. So I was at a conference actually down in Albuquerque, the Mayor's Institute for City Design, uh, which is a fantastic experience, a partnership between the U.S. Conference of Mayors and um, and the National Endowment for the Arts. And so I presented on, um, all the mayors present kind of a design challenge or question mm -hmm. to the rest of the mayors and then some design experts who are also in town for the, for the gathering. And mine was about coal piles, you know, how to move them, what you might be able to do in that site in terms of reuse. And uh, there was a mayor from Charleston, West Virginia, who said, I'm from West Virginia. Um, we don't put coal piles on our rivers, right? He's from West Virginia. <laughs> from West Virginia, <laughs> right? So it, it was actually good to sort of witness that outrage that people viscerally felt when they saw, you know, this, this beautiful waterfront property being taken up. Um, by 36 plus acres of, of coal. 
Uh, so that's a long way of saying, you know, that that is also one of our, our major priorities. Uh, my priority as mayor is to relocate them um, to a more singularly industrial part of our city and mm -hmm. free up that um, that piece of land for some, some some redevelopment. I know that was a priority of your predecessor, mm -hmm. too. And um, challenging issue. Right. My uncle actually used to work for that coal company. Oh, sure. Many, many, many years, years ago. Yeah. Um, are you seeing progress? Is there, is there hope? Is there? Yeah. So what gives us hope, a lot of hope in this area is the fact that the Pulliam power plant has been decommissioned, is in the pro is, is not generating power any longer is, but still in the process of being kind of taken apart, dismantled by WPS. Mm -hmm. And they've burned coal there for, you know, a hundred years or so. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be kind of the interim location where that, where we would move the, these pull, these piles to. Um, that was not an option. <clears throat> until very recently. Sure. So Mayor Schmidt, you know, I think did a lot to, to try to figure out how this could happen. Um, but the, the Pulliam power plant location was not an option until very recently. So that's the big game changer uh, as far as, um, as, you know, in terms of how we look at things. And I've been working with uh, our state legislators. Uh, so um, Senator Coles and Representative Stefan, Senator Hansen, and Representative Krasinski again, and figuring out, you know, how we might be able to, to do this, talking to the governor's office to identify you know, different programs and, and pots of money. But there's a bill that's moving through, um, through the assembly had a, uh, a, vote, a positive vote on the assembly side, just had a public hearing on the Senate side of things, which would just provide a little bit of assistance, uh, very welcome, a million and a half dollars to kind of do some um, geotech planning analysis mm -hmm. um, of both sites to figure out you know what needs to be done. Okay, okay, great. My guest is the mayor of Green Bay, Eric Genrick talking a little bit about his vision for where the city is going, going forward. But you're also going to host the league's annual conference next That's right. month. Yes. And I was looking, you're going to be the unofficial tour guide. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a little bus tour. And well, I've got at least one specific question, but tell me what we're going to see. Tell, tell the folks what we're going to see on that tour. Right. So um, I don't know that I have the full itinerary. Uh, laid out at this point. I know Celestine has been working on that for quite some time, working with Gail on, uh, on doing that thing. But I know that we will we'll see a lot of redevelopment projects in our downtown. Mm -hmm. We will also um, be going outside the city's, uh, the city's limits to, to visit. Uh, Is the, that allowed? Right? I don't know. This is my first <laughs> tour. So uh, I'm not sure what's allowed or what's not. You guys will have to tell me. But No, no, um, no. I, I guess <laughs> intergovernmental collaboration right. is always a big deal. So you're you've got Eshwabanan, and that's what I was going yeah, to say. Yeah, so the the Title Town district is uh, will be on the map. Um, so that's right across the street from Lambeau Field. Sure. Lambeau Field is in uh, in the city of Green Bay. The Title Town district is in Eshwabanan, and um, so that's where the Packers have have done a lot of their development work in recent years. Um, there's Hinterland Brewing Company out there. Um, Bellin has a facility. There's uh, Lodge Kohler, which is really nice. Hotel and Title Town Tech, a partnership between Microsoft and the Green Bay Packers. So um, yeah, so we just wanted to, to make sure that people were aware of what was going on out there across the street from the city of Green Bay. But we've got a really nice relationship with the village of Ashwabana and Mary Kardowski does a really um, tremendous job um, for the citizens of, of Ashwabana. And just want to send the message that, you know, regional collaboration and cooperation is something that uh, that we certainly believe in mm -hmm. and um, and so want to show that off. Great. So what, um, any surprises we're going to see on the tour or I know you're only the mayor and you get, you don't get to say what's on it. Right. Exactly. What would you, what would you like if, if I said to you right now, Hey, I've got an afternoon, right? What would you take me to see? Gosh, um, there are so many different things to, to show off in Green Bay. Um, one of my favorite things about the city and we're going to be a little bit late in the season to, to fully show it off at Bay Beach Amusement Park. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just celebrated our 125th anniversary a couple of years back. Uh, and um, I was in the assembly at that time, so I had a resolution um, to support. And what I said is, you know, a lot of people think that the happiest place in the world is in some swamp in Florida. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's really in Green Bay, Wisconsin, especially for parents, right? I mean, and grandparents. I took my yeah. grandkids there last year. I mean, you can get $20 worth of tickets and go home with half of them, you know, after several hours of entertainment. That, um, that is such an incredible gift that yeah. this community has. 
and most people don't know about it. Right. Yeah. So we've got a roller coaster out there. We have a, a big wheel, um, which is which is really great. It just came online. The big Ferris year. wheel. Yeah, the giant Ferris wheel, which is really right on the shores of uh, of the Bay of Green Bay, the Lake Michigan. And uh, so some fantastic views from the top of, of the big wheel. Um, the Zip and Pippin, as I mentioned, roller coaster, um, but you know, the Tilt a Whirl, the Scrambler, all the all the fun stuff. And uh, it's just it's a it's a really great place for kids and families. Um, so that's that's one of my my favorites, of course. Uh, also out there though, we have the Wildlife Sanctuary, mm-hmm. um, which is another gem here in the community. So you can go out there and um, experience wildlife, and uh, you know, feed the geese and check out the wolves and deer and uh, a number of other uh, animals as well. Um, on the far west side of town, another sort of hidden gem, the Green Bay Botanical Society of Botanical Gardens. Um, just a really beautiful setting. They set up a stage out there with, uh, in recent years uh, for live music. So that's, that's a fantastic place to be. I mentioned downtown, there's you know, so many great businesses and, and restaurants, uh, breweries, if you're into that sort of thing. Titletown Brewing Company in, uh, in Copper State, located right downtown. Um, great food and some some tasty beverages um so yeah there's a there's a ton to check out i'm really looking forward to having you all in town having some of my colleagues in town and, and showing it off gail he knows that he's got to have them back at the hotel within three hours right <laughs> okay yeah, well, i mean we'll we, try to stick to that yeah I, I i could just see our entire league's annual conference disappears on a bus right where did you people go <laughs> <laughs> i'll have fun i'll guarantee that you, you mentioned um Ashwaubenon and Village President Kardoski, and you've got you know De Pere to one side, Howard, Swamico, yeah. all of the other municipalities. How would you rate collaboration in this region? Yeah, and what are some of the things you're working on together? So, you know, I think we have some room to grow there. We've definitely um, gotten some some marching orders from, I would say, from other members of the community who say you guys really need to to work together. You know these. These um, boundaries that are so important to politicians are not so relevant to actual people. Most you of your not citizens to say that politicians aren't it. actual people, but um, you know what I'm saying. Sure. So yeah, it, it's a big point of emphasis um, for me. I have a really good relationship with our county executive, Troy Streckenbach. Uh, made it a point to get out to as many communities in the county as possible in my first six months here. I, I still have one village to visit in um in brown county but otherwise have have been to visit with everyone else and uh so have some room to grow there but uh you know picked up a lot of good ideas at the urban alliance meeting that we both enjoyed Mm -hmm. earlier um this this past summer now Uh, one thing that that came out that mayor hannah mentioned was reciprocity in terms of parks uh, down in the valley. And so that's something that um, that our Parks Department is exploring here, trying to figure out if we could do sort of a universal pool pass um, that would allow you access to Green Bay pools and as well as some of our surrounding municipalities. Um, our fire chief is, is really uh, big on regionalism, has been an advocate for some fire district legislation, which I think I also mentioned uh, sure. at Urban sure. Alliance. So, you know, hoping to do whatever we can to foster some of those relationships, we have we've had an existing relationship with uh, with Village of Alloway for fire service for quite some time. Um, so that's a great story of collaboration and uh, something we hope to build on. Great, and I, I see by the clock here that we've already chewed up our time. But before we go, I mean, you you sat in the legislature. Mayor Crawford down in Mina has legislative experience. Mayor Barrett in Green Bay. <clears throat> What do you know now about cities that you wish you had known when you were sitting in the legislature? Well, it, you know, it's something that I knew, but is obviously much more apparent to me now as we're moving into budget season, that um, it's, it's really, really tough for local governments these days to balance our books, to pay our bills, um, given the fiscal restraints or constraints that we're living under and hopeful that, uh, you know, that we can get access to some additional tools to ease the burden a little bit and invest in what uh, people are really asking us to invest in, and especially in terms of infrastructural needs. Um, not just the roads, but those continue to be, um, you know, a huge need here in Green Bay and across the state, but also some of the stuff underground, you know, the storm sewer and the sanitary sewer, some of the, the nitty gritty. Um, the that, hardware. Yeah, yeah, and so, um, as I said, that, that's something that I was aware of, 
but it's it's just much much more obvious to me now and i feel as though we're reaching uh if not a breaking point you know something close to it and one thing that local leaders are not good about which is a good thing is complaining uh, but we need to be really strong advocates and and be educators with both our residents and our legislators to, to make them um, you know clearly aware of, of what we're facing. Great and I think we will leave it there. My guest is Eric Genrick, the mayor of Green Bay, new mayor of Green Bay. Sounds like you've got some wonderful plans and visions and welcome aboard. Yeah thanks so much for being here. Thank you.